in the conference, Iowa taking down Ohio State. Caitlin Clark becoming the all-time Division I scoring leader, men or women. And possibly an upset brewing here in Champaign with Illinois hanging on to a two-point lead. They have led for nearly 25 minutes in this game. Illinois has also commanded pace in this game. They've had all the momentum for a majority of it, and they've used it to their advantage. Bostic rims out a deep two, and here comes Callan Hake. Hake a three. Potts, second opportunity, rims down. On the 11th offensive rebound of the game for Nebraska, ties it at 59. Potts almost didn't realize how open she was and then was able to adjust to the last second to finally capitalize on the second chance opportunity, where Nebraska has actually struggled in this game, is capitalizing off of those second chance points. Just one for six on second chance opportunities in the first half. Bryant off the back iron, tracked down by Shelley. Has a game high 19. Up to Makaira Cook. Blows it by Markowski and off the back iron. I was going to say, that was a fearless move by Cook. She was uh, did not have numbers in that situation and went down against Markowski. It's got like a foot on her. Markowski at three. And a foul on Genesis Bryant. That is her third. And for Illinois, Megan, their seeding in the Big Ten tournament has already been determined. They are the nine seed. But with a Michigan win, they will play Maryland in the first round. With a Michigan loss, they will play the Wolverines, a team they have already beaten once this year in the regular season. Both Maryland and Michigan Woo! are NCAA tournament teams, as is Nebraska, because they have Josh Shelley making plays like that. Goodness gracious. Her ability to stay balanced even when she's off balance. I mean, her momentum's going backwards, but she's still able to throw that up at the right angle. She's so tough to guard, especially in the paint. She just continues her dominant performances against Illinois. This is now her sixth time playing the Illini in her career and is averaging over 20 points per game in those six contests. Sometimes you have teams you like to play against as a player. <laughs> she sees the color orange, she attacks. Cook attacking, left it short. And the rebound tracked down by Nisley, who got a bump to the forehead. First foul on Shea Bolin, and already to the third on Illinois. Two more in Nebraska shooting free throws. Must have been an open hand. High slap to the face. Unintentional, of course. Of course, basketball play. What do you think this comes down to, final seven and a half minutes? This game's going to come down to who can dominate momentum and pace of play. Right now, it's Jazz Shelley. Leads all scorers with 23. Nebraska has slowed down pace of play of this game. It favors the Huskers if they can grind it out in the half court because they have such great sets and moves so well without the ball with each other. Now you see them in the zone right now going against Illinois. Brian a three. Dahlia McKenzie fighting for it. Last touch by Illinois. Nebraska spreads the floor so well offensively, especially in the half court. Shelley with the hard cut. Wide open look, it, but she sets her defender up to make the cut. Half the battle when it comes to cutting to the basket is cutting hard, but also setting up the initial takeoff. Shelly a step back. Markowski taps it out, and Shelly with a fresh 15 here. Inside to Markowski. Here comes Cook behind the back, coughed it up. Up ahead to Potts, and everyone in the building wearing orange wants a foul, and they won't get it. 8-0 Nebraska run. Nebraska's done a great job getting high percentage looks, but they've completely slowed down this game, and Illinois is now playing a little out of comfort. 
That should help. But Kyra Cook from distance has 19 with three made threes. Illinois was having success when they could keep Nebraska to one and done and get out and run in transition. The Illini need to continue doing just that. Oh, what a backdoor cut by Hake. Delivery courtesy of the freshman, Natalie Potts. Hake did a great job taking one step towards the half court line, then boom, got McKenzie off balance and she had the advantage for the backdoor cut. Shay Bowen off the bench has been spectacular today for Illinois. Shay Bowen has done all of the little things that you need to do in order to win a game. A spark off the bench, making big shots. Man, this is a tight one right now. How much fun has this game been? Well, it's so fun that we're actually not going to take a break. We're going to stay here. It's a three-point game. The reason you hear some boos is because Kendall Bostic just picked up her first foul. And Megan, that's now the fourth on Illinois. Blow by White rims it in. White fakes the handoff. And they do this. Nebraska's ball handlers do this so well. They fake the handoff. And then as the de defense, you think it's happening. But then, boom, they keep the ball and they're at the basket. That's the second or third time Nebraska has faked a handoff in their ball screen action and finish up the rim wide open. Bryant creating off the back iron, tapped into the hands of Hake. And the best rebounding team of the Big Ten, Nebraska, plus five in that category this afternoon with way more offensive rebounds than Illinois. And Petrie puts it in off the window. Nebraska, Largest lead yeah. of the game for Nebraska. They are getting into the paint at ease right now. Anything they want inside the paint, they are getting. Setting great screens, reading the defense, finishing easy bunnies. No champagne problems right now for the Huskers. Businesses go further with 5G solutions. Email in a win against Ohio State today. Big time, Caitlin Clark. I mean, is there a record left for her to break at this point? I don't think so. She's done them all. But so good for the Big Ten. Look, the Big Ten tournament sold out this year. Hobby gets it to go. It is a great time to be a part of Big Ten women's basketball. It is going to be fabulous in Minneapolis to be able to see a sold out crowd for all of these games. And these women deserve it. Some of the best coaches in the country, some of the best players in the country coming out next week. Over 109,000 fans expected during the week of the Big Ten Women's Tournament. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes begin their quest for a tournament title on Friday night. Meanwhile here, Nebraska with a win will lock up the four seed and what a save by Callan Hake. And here comes Jazz Shelley. Potts right around Hobby won't get it. And last touch by Petrie back to Illinois. A look at our tournament bracket as it stands right now. And in the middle of your screen, you see Nebraska slotted as the five. But with a win here, they move into the four spot. Michigan State back to the five. Illinois locked in as the nine. The only thing to be determined is whether or not they'll play Maryland or Michigan. And that is dependent on the result between Purdue and the Wolverines later on tonight. Megan, Nebraska has outscored Illinois 14 to 7 in the fourth quarter. You've mentioned it a couple of times. They have completely dictated pace the last seven minutes of the game. The Huskers have also been able to get the ball inside. They've had high percentage opportunities, and it's also led to open three-point chances because the defense has collapsed. Home run pass to Dolan. Will take it herself and lay it in. You know, Hobby was actually open uh, <laughs> ahead for Dolan, but Dolan was like, I'm actually going to use you as a screen and Tunnel keep it vision. for myself. Why not? Pots of three. And a foul. 
On Camille Hobby, that is her third. Part of what makes Markowski so difficult to defend down low is she's constantly moving and getting position. How about Dolan uses her teammate kind of like a lineman almost, just trying to stay open <laughs> like a running back coming through. And then Markowski is constantly moving down low. It makes her so difficult to box out. She's hunting for angles. She's using her positioning and her size well. Markowski's had a great season. I mean, almost every single game. She has a double-double. Yep. And she is close again today. Two rebounds away from her 18th double-double. She is second in the conference in double-doubles behind Caitlin Clark and Sarah Williams. Those two with 18. And Markowski with 17 and extends the lead back to five for Nebraska. Illinois has to find ways to attack the paint the next couple of possessions. They've had success when they can get into the B1G logo. Cook. Deep two. Rebound Dolan. Into the chest of Markowski and the foul. Gretchen Dolan making the roof almost come off here at State Farm Center, but making the smart play, creating the second chance opportunity. She's got four people around her, but she absorbs the contact, focuses on the finish, and uses the glass to her advantage, creating that separation from Alexis Markowski and avoiding the block. Shooting one. Dolan. A 74% free throw shooter has a chance to make it a two-point game. And if you're just joining us, Illinois led after each of the first three quarters. They trail by two with two minutes to go in Champaign. Five on the timer for Shelley. Bryant tracks it down and will wisely pull it back out. Great defensive possession by the Illini. The help side was there, so Nebraska could not get the ball inside to Markowski. Huskers have missed their last five field goal attempts. Bryant trying to tie it up, and she will not on that shot, but will get a chance to tie it at the line. Good things have happened for the Illini when they can get into the paint at high percentage areas. They are exploiting Nebraska's defense. Genesis Bryan is so shifty. She's crafty, creative, getting to the rim, and she can absorb that contact at a high level and still maintain her shoulders being square to the rim. So the ball has a chance to, to go in for an and one. Well, she is one of the seniors being honored after the game. And her former AAU coach surprised her today at shoot-around. He is in attendance. By the way, coming up, Rick Pizzo, Ra Rafael Davis, Mike DeCourcy, John Beeline. Get you ready for the Huskers and the Scarlet Knights on the Big Ten Live tip-off show presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Tied at 73 in Champaign. Taken by Amy Williams, still has three left. Nebraska in the bonus the rest of the way. Fouls to get. Hake triggers it in. Ten to shoot for Shelley. Inside to Markowski. Fadeaway jumper, rims out. Rebound, Bostic. And a chance for Illinois to take the lead. They've got to get a paint touch on this possession. Cook to the bucket, draws a foul, and two shots coming for the senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Makaira Cook has gotten to the rim at will in this game. I love how confident she is going down that hesitation, forces 
the defense out of their stance, and she just attacks Markowski, almost falling down to the ground a little bit. It's like she tripped right before going Lincoln into Markowski, but still is able to draw that contact. Cook, an 87% free throw shooter. Another look at it here. Oh, and you see the trip from Markowski. That's why the foul gets called. It's nice when we have replay ability here. <laughs> Cook gives Illinois a one-point lead. And another timeout taken by Amy. Rebound, Hick misses the second chance, but was fouled. And the offensive rebounding has been dominated in this game by Nebraska. 14 offensive boards. Oh boy, I didn't see a There's whole lot no of contact, contact there. on the shot, unless you could call a foul on Kendall Bostic trying to box out Natalie Potts, but nobody touched Callan Hick. Free McNuggets for everybody in attendance. Last touched by Illinois and the officials. Frank Steratore, Tiara Cruz, Brian Interline are going to check the monitor just to make sure. The previous play is under review. Bostic gets two hands. Potts hands come through. That looks like it's off of Potts' We've hands. That should be Illinois ball. We had a lot going on right. on that last stretch. Not only this play determining who it was last touched by, but Megan, to your point, there could have been a foul call. From this angle, real quick, this looks like it's off of Potts, but from the other angle, it looks like it's off of Bostic. There could have been a foul called on Bostic on the rebound effort, which sent Potts to the floor. Either way, it was going to result in two shots for Nebraska, but it might have resulted in Potts taking the free throws rather than Hake. As you get a look from across court here, such a bang bang play. Initial call on the floor is that it's Nebraska basketball, which obviously makes a difference given how close that play is. And the important thing here is what the initial call was. So Nebraska ball, that is so close. One angle looks like Bostic was able to hit it out. The other one, it looks like Potts hit it out. And these frames are in sync right now that you're watching. Shout out to our crew. I almost think that's too close to call. Your thoughts? It's way too close to call. This is going to stay Nebraska ball. There's not enough video evidence to overturn it. Well, now Tiara Cruz has backed away from the monitor and has asked Frank Steratore to take a look at it. Which gives you a sense of, A, how difficult this is to call, and B, how important it is for both teams. Illinois fighting to keep their NCAA tournament hopes alive. They have three wins right now over potential NCAA tournament teams. And for Nebraska, we've said it all day, the opportunity to get that coveted double bye in the Big Ten tournament with a win, they can seal that up here this afternoon. Nebraska has put together quite the NCAA tournament resume this season. A massive win over then second-ranked Iowa at home. They've gone on the road, done some nice things. See, look, at Michigan State, that's a massive win. Maryland, Illinois, Michigan twice. I mean, these are NCAA tournament teams. They have these massive wins over. Projected by our Autumn Johnson to be an eight seed. For them to get a double bye in the Big Ten tournament would be huge. From a momentum standpoint, it could potentially put them up on maybe a seven line in the NCAA tournament. And it will stay Nebraska basketball. So another look at it for Nebraska, who has not scored in the last two minutes, and they are 0 for 7. 0 for the last seven from the floor. And 
Now they're taking a look at the clock to make sure that 24.2 is accurate on the game clock. 20 seconds on the shot clock for the Huskers. Everything in the playbook available to Amy Williams right here. Illinois has to make sure they are communicating, especially on screens. And for Nebraska, going to be big to make sure when they go to set a screen that it is a legal screen. You can't move as the person receiving the screen before your teammate gets there to set it. Amy Williams' team coming off a week-long layoff. She wondered how her team would respond. They trailed after each of the first three quarters, jumped out on Illinois to start this quarter, had as much as a seven-point lead in the fourth. But Illinois has scored the last six points of the fourth quarter. They lead it by one as we take another look at it here. And it's when the ball bounces out of bounds right there. 24.2 on the timer right now. What'd you learn from TR Cruz? Uh, they're having an issue with TV Sport right now, trying to get the right angle. And so they're trying to figure out clockwise right now what things are. They just added two tenths of a second. So Nisley will trigger it in for Nebraska. Down one. Tournament seating on the line for the Huskers. Shelly with a game high 23. Five seconds. Nestle off the mark, tapped out by Markowski. Five seconds to go. Nestle to Shelly for the win. <laughs> Illinois hangs on.